You call the program Plus Sports on Plus TV Africa. But on a Wednesday morning, I call it your midweek thriller. Welcome on the show. My name is Wally Scott. Today on the show, I have a fantastic guest. We'll talk, we'll talk about him and talk to him later. But I hate to be the bringer of bad news. In the last two, three weeks, I've always brought you bad news. Once again, I have brought one again. I'm not happy about it, but it's news. We have to say it. Now, players and officials of Ikiti United Football Club of Adwikiti were on Tuesday, yesterday, involved in an auto crash. The club's media officer, Kwazim Oladapo, made this known in a statement on Tuesday night, describing the accident as mild. He noted that the accident occurred while the players were returning to Adwikiti from Ikerekiti after their evening training session, while stating that there were no casualties. Oladapo said, but some of them were with varying degrees of injury. Now, the media person says there were no casualties per se, only some varying degrees of injuries. My English feel me there. Okay, well, all things being equal, we are tired of these road accidents, this um, kidnap on the road, this um, robbery and all that on our roads. And um, the NFF president, Amadou Penik, said something on a different media house. He said, maybe sometimes you should go by boats. And that day I laughed. Our roads are not good. We're not planning to repair those roads. We're suggesting our players travel by boats, by sea, if the place can, water can get to the place. And I ask myself, who suggests things like this? We should be walking towards making sure the roads are safer, the roads are better, and not suggesting things like if the water reaches there, let's go by sea. Come on. Okay, um, don't even have my guest yet. I don't want to call his name yet. Okay, so... I'll go to CAF now. Our new CAF president. Um, now, newly elected CAF president, his name is Patrice Mosepe, says the African Cup of Nations will continue to be held every two years, despite calls from FIFA that it be changed to four years. Cup of Nations will continue to be held every two years, the Confederation of African Football's new president said on Tuesday. That's despite calls from soccer's international governing body for it to be held every four years. The Cup's frequency and mid-season timing has long been criticised by European managers, forced to give up their African players. And last year, FIFA president Gianni Infantino said playing the competition biennially had not delivered any commercial or infrastructure benefit. But Patrice Motsepi unanimously voted CAF's president on Friday disagrees. I mean, this is one area where there were different views amongst different people. And I've got no doubt... Uh, where we are now, it has to be every second, every two years. There's no doubt about that. Motsepe said the timing could not be changed because CAF badly needs the revenue. Though he also has fond words for Infantino. He's my brother. Uh, he, he loves Africa. And I need him to help us do the things we need to do for Africa. CAF reported an $11.4 million loss at its Congress on Friday on top of $6.8 million the year before. The Cup of Nations previously provided 80% of CAF's income. Motsepe said finding new commercial partners for the tournament and other CAF events would be a top priority. African football needs partners. And you need partners who can make things happen. He added that he was absolutely confident that the continent's soccer will improve in quality and be self-sustaining over the next few years. Welcome back. Patrice Mosepe suggesting that, well, the Munitions Cup should come to two years and should stay that way. FIFA is saying four years. Now, former Nigerian midfielder Garbo Lawal has urged the Super Eagles coach General Roll to lead the team's attack against the Squirrels of Bene and Crocodile of Lesotho in the 2021 African Nations Cup qualifiers. Now, he says he and should lead that, but I'll come to that later. I've got the former media spokesperson of the Super Eagles, Tony Ibisoe, on the show today. Tony, good morning. Good morning, Wale. It's good to have you on the show, sir. Thank you so much, Wale. I started the show on a sad note this morning. Um, and I know that um, Ekiti United again had an accident in their car. The spokesperson says it was mild, only that he had some small, small injuries, so he claims. 
I know in your time as the media spokesperson, you have some drama like that with the Super Eagles then. When some player says, no, we're not boarding this bus. No, we never had, um, we never had um, issues with our, um, with our boss at any time. Uh, so we didn't uh, have issues. And uh, thankfully, um, we didn't have any accidents uh, during our time um, in the Super Eagles. Uh, we we have a very good um, luxury bus that is in Abuja, and uh, most of the times when we play outside of Abuja, we have uh, uh, the bus uh, moved down from Abuja to where, wherever we stayed. And in some cases, some states provided us with very good uh, buses to move us around. So we never had uh, um, issues with uh, transportation at all. Now, I'll tell you, what would you advise these clubs to do? We have, we have too many cases every week now. One case, either it's a um, robbery or it's kidnap or it's accident. What can they do? Uh, well, uh, unfortunately, is the reality of our time now. It's not just about uh, the teams. Uh, it's about what we all go through uh, in, in Nigeria. Uh, the state of the roads, um, the states of um, the buses with which these teams travel, and uh, so many other issues uh, need to be looked into. Um, we, we, we saw what happened with Canopillas. The state government produced the new bus for them immediately. The same thing with Wiki. Um, last year, we had Lobi. Uh, and now, we, we have uh, Make It United. I, I'm sure the state government will look um, at um, the buses with which these teams move around and try to give them new, new buses. But apart from uh, new buses, I think we should also begin to look at... Um, um, the level of travels that we that we undergo every time, uh, the journeys are very extensive. Nigeria is such a big country. Sometimes you travel uh, 12 to 15 hours to another 12, 15 hours uh, fro. That's almost 30 hours on the road. Uh, that's um, one full day and a few hours. So we have to look at shortening the number of travels we do, the length of these travels. Uh, considering the state of our roads and all of that. No matter how new a car is, no matter how strong a car is, if it is on the road so regularly, so extensively, like what we see with some of these buses, there's no way uh, they won't have problems um, often. Let's look so at the super egos now. <clears throat> consider road, tra road travels. Okay. Uh, sometimes consider road travel by, traveling by air. You know, when you are traveling beyond six, seven hours to travel by air, that's why CAF will always tell you that if you are traveling more than an hour or two, make sure you go by air. So we need to begin to look at some of these options as well. Okay, so let's look at this. During your time with the Super Eagles and the Super Eagles now, how would you assess the team and how well do you think they will do against Lesotho and Benin Republic? Yeah, well, I, I just left the team um, October last year. Yeah. So between October and now, not much has changed. Uh, they've only played two games and uh, there were two draws. Um, but... No, I, I, the, the team is good. The team is good. Uh, I believe um, what we saw when we played against um, Sierra Leone in Benin, where we threw away a four-goal lead, um, is a very good lesson for the team. I'm sure they will pick up those lessons, apply them for the games coming up uh, um, uh, later this month. Um, don't forget, this is a qualifying. These are qualifying games for the Nations Cup. We are on top of the group. We need one more point. And there's no way we won't get more than one point from the last two games. So I'm confident that the team will do what they need to do. Uh, we need to commend Gennot Raw. Before he came, we had missed out of two AFCONs. And then he got us qualifying with a game to go. We went to the AFCON and finished in third place for the first time, a 24-team AFCON. So for me, it's not a bad result at all. It's commendable. And I think the team is hoping to build on it, and I believe they can build on it. Garba Lawal is suggesting that um, in actual leads the attack. Some are saying, what if Yenachos goals? The hat trick was a fluke. And that we should stick to Victor Osime. How do you think that attack should look like on that day, on those days? Oh, well, um, both players are, um, are not new to the team. Um, Yenacho used to lead the attack a, a few years ago, and, and then he had a, a, a loss of form. But the good news is that he's back, he's fighting, he's scoring goals, which is, which is very, very uh, positive for us um, as a team. The same applies to uh, Osime. Before then, we had uh, Mojani Galo. 
Um, I'm sure that um, when, they, when they come to camp, um, the coaches will have a close look at um, what the possibilities are. I'm very, very happy that uh, Osime is back, uh, scoring the goals. Um, and I beg your pardon, the hand at And I'm also happy that uh, Osime has overcome his injury and is already playing and has already scored a goal uh, for Napoli in the Serie A. So it's good for us to have all of these options um, in the team. So um, the coaches will decide. Um, as much as we probably will want to look at the players and who we feel to lead the attack, I'm sure the coaches uh, who are paid to do this job will know what, exactly what to do and they make the right choice for Nigeria. Something confuses most Nigerians, and I want to try and overcome that today. And maybe you explain to us. Now, Benin Republic, when they listed their squad, they dropped Sesayon, that's the captain, <clears throat> because he was clubless. But we have a captain who is clubless, and he was one of the first guys on the list. Who plays the clubless captain? Ah, well, you, you, you need to understand a few things um, around the dynamics of the team. Um, when a coach decides to call up a player that you think is, is clubless, um, you need to understand the dynamics that sometimes the coaches are looking for some other things apart from what you just do on the pitch. Um, the coach is looking for an influence that can control uh, the players, given the enormity of um, the task ahead. Um, there are a lot of other things outside of the football on the pitch that goes on um, in the camp. So I give the coach of the I keep the coaches the benefit of the doubt uh, when they call up a player like Ahmed Musa. You know our team is a young team. When you look at the game we played against uh, Sierra Leone, you saw that once Ahmed Musa left the pitch, um, the team began to wander uh, like a sheep without a shepherd. So there are some other things that can happen to a team outside of the football pitch that makes a coach want to have a player around. Um, so let's give the coach the benefit of the doubt in uh, calling up Ahmed Musa. I will come back for you. <clears throat> I will come back to that on the show. Now, everybody is saying the problem the team has as we speak is the goalkeeping section. Now, everybody felt like, well, based on experience, it should be Akwei. We have um, Alan Pasu at home here. We've got um, Ajiboy at home here. And you go for a Maduka, young guys who play abroad. And some say Raw only believes in guys who play abroad. Whether it's third division, whether they are clubless, as long as they are abroad, he wants them. And does not believe in the home-based, homegrown team I and mean, players. It doesn't work for Nigeria like that. Well, okay. The the the, the answer to that question is um, who is Maduka Okoye? What is he doing presently? Um, I'm not sure you have too many um, African goalkeepers keeping in mainstream Europe, top European leagues um, like Maduka. Probably you look at Chelsea, uh, the Senegalese goalkeeper. Um, the Onana, the Cameroonian goalkeeper, is presently suspended by, by FIFA. Um, so you don't, you don't have too many of them. The goalkeeper with the highest profile in Nigeria at the moment is uh, Maduka Okoye. But, um, so the, don't you, would you agree with me on this one? That um, if we're looking for a goalkeeper to pl play in the Nations Cup, we don't have to look for a goalkeeper in, the, in mainstream Europe. We can actually look for a goalkeeper like Akpoi plays week in, week out in an African league. Yeah, Akpoi was, of course. Akpoi is a member of the team. Akpoi was our first choice at the, at the last um, uh, Nations Cup. Um, and um, you, you go for your best goalkeepers. Wherever you are, you go, you go for the best that you have. And um, I, I think the goalkeepers that the coaches have called up for this game are, are competent. Um, you need to Take a look at what Maduka Okoye is doing consistently uh, in the Dutch league, week in, week out. He's, 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 he's one of the best goalkeepers in the Dutch league at the moment. And this was a guy that just two years ago was um, somewhere in um, the lower divisions in Germany. So I think we should commend the coaches for looking uh, for such talents, brushing up such talents and uh, helping him um, to get to where he is at the moment. And I believe he's, he's a young goalkeeper with a lot of years ahead of him with a lot to offer to the Super Eagles. So uh, I don't have any problems with uh, uh, Maduka Okoye. They stay with Francis Tuzoho, you know, just a young goalkeeper with a lot of future ahead of them. Akoye is on standby. So um, from the position where we were looking for goalkeepers, now it looks like we are spoiled for choice, having a lot of options. And I think it's um, only good uh, for the national team. Okay, now let's look at this. We have um, players abroad who have been spoken to. How 
optimistic should we be, Adel Abiyo <clears throat> and the rest of them? These are very good players for their teams, doing very, very well for their squads and them. Um, of course, there will be a plus for any team. But how, who is talking to them? How optimistic should we be that these guys will come to Nigeria and play for the Super Eagles? Uh, we, we, we've had a lot of um, players in the last three, four years who have uh, switched nationality uh, and are now in the Super Eagles. Um, we have Ekong, we have Balogun, Olaino, uh, Tyron, you know. We have a lot of these guys who have, who have come around and, now, and are now in the national team. Alex Iwobi and all of that. Um, the, the process of switching nationality is not an easy one. Uh, there's a whole lot of process, um, writing to FIFA, the player showing interest that he wants to change and play uh, for Nigeria, and then uh, uh, the home nation approving that, okay, this guy is free to go to play for another country. It's a whole lot of process. And uh, uh, a lot of these players that you talked about have started the process. Some have completed, some have not completed. So we just wait and see how it goes. You know, the NFF is trying to be a little bit more discreet uh, with some of these things until they are perfected. That's when they want to announce so that we don't have the same issues that we're having with uh, Tammy Abraham and uh, Ibere Eze because they are still um, interested in playing for England. So we, we wait to see. It's a function of what the players want, and then the Nigerian Football Federation will be able to kickstart um, what the processes. Uh, the processes needed for them to complete their switch to Nigeria. But as you said, uh, Adarabio, uh, Ademola Lukman, Ovi Ejaria, a lot of these players, Tuba uh, Akpom, a lot of these players are there, available, willing to play for Nigeria. Uh, but let's wait until the processes are complete, and then we'll see um, how it pans out at the end of the day. Okay, thank you very much, Steve, for coming on the show this morning. <clears throat> I am truly grateful. Thank you, Wally, for the opportunity to be on your show. Thank you very much. Now, Real Madrid easily overcame Atalanta 3-1 at home. In a Champions League last 16 leg on Wednesday to stroll into the quarterfinals 4-1 on aggregate. Karim Benzema scored a sixth goal in five games to put the 13 times European champions in charge after 34 minutes, following a poor kickout by Atlanta goalkeeper Marco Sportiello, which was intercepted by Luka Modric. Captain Sergio Ramos put Real, Real further at ease when he converted the penalty on the hour. Although the Italian side managed to get one goal back thanks to a free kick from Louis Muriel in the 83rd, but any hope they had of making a recovery was quickly dashed a minute later by a low strike from real substitute Marco Asensio. Zidane praised an evergreen Luka Modric after the 35-year-old midfielder produced a majestic display in the game. Atlanta coach Gian Piero Gasparini said they were disappointed for not performing at their best in the two matches against Real, but said the team's experience in the Champions League was positive. Man City manager Pep Guardiola says they will celebrate reaching the UEFA Champions League quarterfinals, but should put it behind them for now. City beat their German opposition, Borussia Mönchengladbach, 2-0 in their last 16 second leg tie, winning 4-0 on aggregate. Guardiola said that right now the focus is on their FA Cup tie against Everton, as they should forget about the Champions League for now. We yeah, arrived in that moment, being in the Premier League and uh, 14 points in front. Uh, <coughs> Final the Carabao quarterfinals are going to play Saturday and quarterfinals for Champions League. Uh, we could not be better. But uh, like I said before, so we will be judged for the titles we can win or lift. And I still there are many, many things. And today is good. We're going to celebrate it. Everybody's fit, 20 players, composer. But everything can change immediately in one day. So now we're going to play a game after international break. I don't know the people has going to come back. Now we are in the same path, but go to the national team, one week off, and I don't know how we're going to react. We immediately will have Easter, Champions League leads, Champions League, and, um, and I don't know what's going to happen. So that's why the, the best way we can do is, like you said today, forget about the quarterfinals, it's just focus and play the best way as possible today. Try to win the game. Forget about it, the quarterfinals and it will be the same. So just two football games and play like we have done this season in the previous seasons and and that's all. If we deserve it, we'll go through like the game against Everton. If don't, we'll be out. Can this band Pep Guardiola win the quadruple this season? I don't know. Thomas Tuchel is looking for his Chelsea strikers to show a more ruthless edge while they face Atletico Madrid at Stamford Bridge in the Champions League tonight. His team have scored just seven times in their last seven games 
although that has allowed them to continue their unbeaten starter under the former PSG and Dortmund coach, but the German is insistent his team are creating enough chances. Chelsea are defending a 1-0 lead from the first leg. Well, first of all, this is uh, maybe the, the, the worst moment to talk about because it's one day before for a, a big match, an important match. We, of course, we know, everybody knows about, the, like you say, the situation of the three players. All three players performed on a super high level, very, very reliable. This is the most important and from there on we will take the decisions in the club and then we will communicate when the decision is taken. But it's not, not a secret and it's obvious that, that all three performed uh, outstanding. And Thiago is missing now since, since many weeks, unfortunately, which is uh, too long because we miss him a lot. But uh, Andreas and, and Tony did a fantastic job so far and we have to keep on going like this and then the rest we will, will, will be solved. Well, I believe that every club has its uh, DNA and every club have, has its characteristic and with Diego Simeone, Atletico became one of the toughest team uh, to beat in Europe over years and years and years. So uh, this is their characteristic. They, they rely on a disciplined, hard-working, super-organized defense. At the same time, they have incredible uh, quality um, in, in to, to attack and to, to play also a possession game. For me, it's a very complete complete squad and you have to be aware of everything. They are able to, to press high, they are able to defend low, they are able to play ball possession. But in most of the games, they, they rely on a, on a, on a, on a hard-working defense. Thomas Tuchel. Making sure Chelsea is playing fantastic football. The build-up is fantastic, but the last third, no goals. LeBron James has joined Fenway Sports Group, FSG, as a partner. The Boston Globe reported on Tuesday, making the four-time National Basketball Association MVP a part owner of a Major League Baseball Boston Red Sox. Basketball superstar LeBron James has entered the world of Major League Baseball by joining forces with Fenway Sports Group, or FSG, as a partner. The move, reported on Tuesday by the Boston Globe, makes the four-time NBA MVP a part owner of the Boston Red Sox. The 36-year-old Los Angeles Lakers forward purchased an undisclosed number of shares in FSG, which has also approved a $750 million private equity investment from Redbird Capital Partners, the Globe reported, citing a source with knowledge of the deal. FSG, which also owns English Premier League soccer champions Liverpool, did not respond to a request for comment. The 17-time NBA All-Star is perhaps an unlikely figure to join the Boston sports landscape because he has allegiances to some of the city's fiercest rivals. James has previously rooted for MLB's New York Yankees. On a Wednesday morning, you call it Plus Sports and Plus TV Africa. I call it your midweek thriller. Thank you, former media spokesperson of the Super Eagles of Nigeria, Tony Bisoe, for being our guest on the show this morning. My name is Wally Scott. Join me same time tomorrow morning for the same show, Plus Sports and Plus TV Africa. Like I always advise you at the end of every show, if not for anything, at least for your heart, do some sports. Mm -hmm.